Hi, welcome to Sustain Talks. Today I'm joined by Mark Shearer, co founder and CEO of Action Funder. At a time where the cost of living is soaring and charities are struggling to survive, I think it's imperative that we look closer to support those in the communities around us. I've been looking forward to this conversation so much. Welcome, Mark. It's so good to have you with me today. How are you? I'm good. Thanks, Sam. Thanks for having me on board and uh, looking forward to our discussion. Yeah. Um, let's start. I always start with a bit of introduction, who you are, what your background is and how Action Funder came about. Well, um, how long have you got? No, I'll, <laughs> I'll try and make that brief. But um, so background is actually commercial property. So I come from a, a commercial background. Um, but uh, we actually set up uh, what Action Funder was originally called Semble. And Assemble, we were an agency delivering community campaigns for major corporates, because you could see a lot of corporates were wanting to deliver on their brand purpose, and they really didn't know how to. And this was kind of in the early days. So um, we delivered over 50 community campaigns, and we spotted a real gap in the market that there, we could create some tech for good, um, which has become Action Funder. And Action Funder is effectively a speed dating funding platform connecting companies with local community projects. Um, so we, we launched Action Funder about 15 months ago, uh, and I'm delighted to say over a million pounds has gone through the system of grants, has gone through the system. Uh, we've got over 30 companies, um, for, i.e. funders, um, and uh, over 300, and, I think it's about 330 projects have received funding now from those through those grants. That's really amazing. What, uh, what uh, and it, sorry, you said it's been going for how long? For about, we launched in May 21, so I think that's what, about 15, 16 months. So uh, wow. we've had a really good first stint. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, as you said earlier, in the, with the cost of living crisis and this really difficult winter we're, gonna, uh, we're going to have, or already starting to have, never has it been more important for companies to really engage with their communities and create that impact on the ground. Um, and actually, what's really interesting is, and it's all about timing, but there's never been a better time for companies to really uh, increase their value th through doing these kinds of things. Um, so, but I'll let you ask your questions without. No, I, I, I think that that's, that's the most important thing. You know, we, we're going into the winter. It's getting so tough for, um, for people, for business, but social value means so much and it, you know, not only does it do good for the communities and the charities, but it also does good for business, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. In, it, for me, in in um, in my mind, this this has to be a value exchange, because if both parties benefit from any relationship, um, then that's always going to be a, a great platform for success. And if you look at the world we live in, um, you know, there's never been, as I said earlier, there's never been a better time for businesses to really, really deliver on their social value pur and their purpose and their ESG programs. Because yeah. it makes them more competitive. They get uh, a better platform to retain staff and to recruit staff and win the war on talent. They can demonstrate in their tenders and their sales all the good stuff they're doing, which is gonna make them probably pick up more sales. And they also have better investor relations. So for businesses, it's, it's an amazing time to, it's kind of a win-win. They can improve their business um, and they can also deliver a lot of impact. Mm. At the same time, what we're seeing is that communities are really driving uh, the impact at a local level. Um, it's people on the ground, those grassroots projects who really understand the local needs. And so at Action Funder, we're about bringing those two parties, the companies and the communities together uh, in a mutually beneficial way. Um, but for a lot of companies, it's an area that they've maybe not gone into Mm. you know in in a strategic way before so where do they start yeah it's, it's a good question look it's not easy for companies uh, there are a lot of there are a lot of articles uh, around greenwashing um yeah. community washing in our space and uh, and there are a lot of um you can imagine a lot of owners of businesses and directors who, who are worried they're saying okay we, we, we want to do this but we are worried about taking that step and you know we've a lot of them have set out their ambitions, their visions. Well, how do we do this? Um, so what's really interesting is the rise of the acronym ESG. Um, it used to be CSR and, and other, other things, but I think now we're very much settled on ESG. And, and what we've heard is that the E and the G is easier than the S. 
yeah. So, you know, environmentally, people can see very quick, quick outcomes. Uh, it's because they can, they can make interventions, they can deliver on those, and they can see the outcomes of the carbon they're saving, all the trees they're planting and so on. With regards to the tree and the governance, um, you know, it, it's looking at their business, uh, the stakeholders within that, making sure it's diverse, it's inclusive, and so on. But the S pillar, everyone's like, oh, God, where do we start? Um, so really, that's why we created Action Funder um, to make to provide a very practical tool to enable companies to, as I said, meet and fund the community projects that are relevant to them. And really, um, the crux of this is about getting the right money at the right time to the right people, so they can uh, then implement maximum impact, um, and then that impact brings value back to the businesses. But it's it's not easy. And so how do people meet their, their first steps? I think they need a plan. They can come and talk to us if they want to. We've got our strategy team, the Action Fund Plus team. Um, but they do need to set out their store. They need to make some commitments. They need to engage their workforce. But they need to look at what's important to them as a business. And you can't do everything. You know, you need to start to focus. And then once you've set out your plan, um, and your objectives. That gives you the ability to then say, right, how are we going to deliver on these? And, and the two should, you, when you are setting your plan, you should be looking at what's deliverable um, because it's so important in this space that you are, you know, you're walking the talk. Yeah. And it's got to be a true partnership. You know, it can't really be one sided. A lot of, um, seen a lot of businesses, they'll, they'll go out and they'll raise funds and that's great, but you get so much more back if it's a partnership and a discussion and you're working together, right? Yeah, and, and the world's, in my mind, the world's ready for this. And we need to be ambitious and progressive in, in what can be achieved. Um, I think it's totally the right time to have major corporates partnering with smaller and local nonprofits, charities, community groups to the benefit of both. Um, um. And you know, five, ten years ago, people said, well, that, "That's you know, that's not really going to happen." But it, it is, it is happening. We've seen it on Action Funder, and you know, our vision is to see thousands of companies backing millions of community projects to the benefit of both parties. Um, yeah. There's going to be that value exchange there. And, and what we've seen from our community projects, um, they totally respect that relationship. They respect that companies, if they are going to fund them, need to demonstrate the value of that funding. Um, and that's been really great, actually, to see, because there hasn't been any of this, oh, we'll take your money, and no, we're not going to give you the impact reports and the posts and so on. It's actually been the opposite and saying, we'd, we'd love to take your, you know, we'd love you to fund us, and we'd love you to be more involved in our project going forward. We'd love you to bring down volunteers. Um, we'd love you to post us on our, your social media and so on. And so this is that kind of the win-win-win. You know, you're getting stronger communities delivering more impact. Um, you're getting companies um, that are delivering value, um, and you're also getting a an environment that is um, that is helping people and an increased number of beneficiaries. Yeah, those uh, grassroots organisations they they often get left out as well. You know, people might go for the bigger charities, but it, you know, especially now looking at your community mm. and people that are struggling around you. Um, yeah. But yeah. go for the big ones or work with both? What, what? So my, my, my view is you should do a bit of both. Um, so there's an amazing stat that of the almost three billion pounds is given from companies to um, charitable courses in the UK each year. And only... 2% of that goes to the really innovative grassroots local charities and projects, um, which is crazy. Um, the large charities do some great work, don't get me wrong, but um, it's local people who tend to understand the local needs and they, and they know what needs to be done. Um, so in my mind, there is a real need to, equal, you know, to, to even up that balance and to get more money into local projects. I mean, there's another scary stat that was released in um, August that 900 million pounds is spent by charities each year just filling out applications, you know, um, yeah, which is equivalent to about 35% of the total grants that come across. So you know, it, it, these are big numbers. And what we're trying to do is not only get the money to those really local projects that are 
very diverse, very inclusive, absolutely the type of projects that a lot of companies want to meet and support. Um, but it's also about getting that money across quickly. Um, and so because we, we've got a, a matching exchange, like a, a speed dating site, we are enabling that relate those relationships to form within days rather than months. And that's yeah. So it saves so much time. Um, but what about, you know, is it just giving money or volunteering? How, what, it, do, do companies need to think about the whole package or is it just, they just need the funds? Um, so we surveyed as our, our agency, pre our previous agency assembled before we changed our name, we surveyed our directory and we said, what do you, what do you really need? Um, and it, I think it was about 80% came out saying we need micro grant funding for oven ready projects uh, at the right time, more than anything else. Um, and actually, if you speak to the, uh, the nonprofits, most of them don't want volunteers, if I'm honest. They would love to have volunteers with funding up front. So if you're going to a local community garden, they'd love to have people a company say, okay, great, we're gonna, we're gonna provide you with a whole load of equipment that you need. And we would love to host you on a volunteering day to do that. So then what they're doing is they're getting that equipment, the materials up front is gonna be a real investment in their community project. And it also means they can uh, have volunteers along and cement those relationships with the company. So what, what we're doing on Action Funder is at the moment, we want to stay really focused because you're much better as a platform doing one thing and doing it really, really, really well. Um, so ours is funding because that's what we know the grassroots local community project want. Um, but what we are doing is we're building in some functionality so that when funders are choosing the projects they want to back, once they be matched, they can see which projects would accept volunteers and they can then fund them, but they can then arrange volunteering offsite um, directly, which is a much better way to do it. Uh, yeah, concerned. that's brilliant. Um, with, I mean, uh, you mentioned before about the greenwashing, community washing. Uh, sometimes it's, it goes wrong and people are scared to get too involved. What can companies do to make sure that they're not community washing? Well, um, it's a really good question. So, you know, th there is there are some really bad examples of community washing, right? And and they need to be called out, and and that's fine. Um, you know, when they are called out, because I think it's it depends how those companies react to that. Um, and it can be a very positive thing when a company is called out for greenwashing or community washing because it means that they they see that they're not necessarily um, delivering their ESG in a balanced way. So often it happens when the company's doing a very small intervention and then they make a big, big marketing splash about it. And that's just like, well, hold on a minute. So this is actually all about proportionality. And, and, and so um, first of all, I think it's very important that there is, um, the companies are called out um, and secondly, I, I, I think it needs to be done in a productive way to encourage these businesses who are doing this to take a good look at themselves and say, hold on, we got that wrong, hands up, and let's now move on. What I think we need to avoid is this, this kind of blacklisting and finger pointing of, well, this company's done that, so we're, no one's going to talk to them because they got this wrong. Um, it, it, it's, this is a whole new area for businesses, and they are going to make mistakes. Um, so if they continually push this and they continually abuse the, you know, the, the, the balance in terms of uh, impact versus um, their, uh, how, they, how they're promoting what they do, then that's a different story. Um, so one of my first things I'd say is I think um, we need to respect that companies, it's a new thing for them and they are going to make mistakes. And as long as they learn from them and they do change their ways, Great, okay. We need to be very practical in this space. We Everybody actually wants the same thing here. We all want to make the world a better place. We want to improve the environment. We want to improve the communities um, and we want to have more diversity um, and that everyone's off that. So it's about working together productively to make that happen. So um, yes, we're all up for finger pointing, but also moving on. What I, what I would say is one of the reasons why we structured Action Funder as it is, 
is, is that everything is first sourced. So if you go on to the profiles of Sir Robert McAlpine or Green King or Argent or Southwest Water, you can see what money has gone to which project, when, and you can see from the system all the updates that have come through from those projects, the posts, the videos, the pictures, etc., in real time. And actually what the system also does is it gives, uh, when, when the project's complete, they fill in an impact survey that confirms the outcomes and the impact that's been created from that funding. Now at the moment, you know, the funders get that, they could share it if they want to, but the really important thing is, is that we, we've built the system so there's maximum transparency. Everything is based on uh, you know, tangible, real projects. Um, and there's real time updates and reporting. So if yeah. anyone said to McAlpines, well, you know, of those, I don't know, uh, of those 69 projects, you know, blah, 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 blah. They can say, well, go onto our system, see what they're up to, see the updates. We can provide you with the impact reports if you want. So this is actually why funding is, it's also quite a good, not only, it's a good mechanic, because not only do the community groups and charities and nonprofits need funding more than anything else, but it creates a very simple exchange. It yeah. partnership, that relationship says, we're going to provide you with this, with this funding in return for you looking to deliver this project. So. Yeah, and that's really good, especially when it comes, you know, as you mentioned before, uh, with ESG reporting, like having the, you know, a lot of companies are probably worried also about where that money is going and can they prove that it's going to the charity or the community project and they want to see the results in what they're giving. So it's it, yeah. it's all there for everyone to see. Yeah, and you, you know, grand designs became interesting because of all the problems that people had building their dream houses. You know, yeah. if every project was perfect and, and delivered on time and on budget, it'd be boring, right? So the, the funders, uh, i.e. the companies that use Action Fund, they're, they're realists, they, they know that not everything's gonna go perfect. What we've actually seen is that some of the projects over perform and some take a bit longer to get to their goals. What's really interesting though, Sam, is that um, the project set out how many beneficiaries they think they will, um, they will benefit. Um, and we then check that in the, in the reporting, we check, did you, how many beneficiaries benefited from this funding? And we've seen a 50% increase in the real number of beneficiaries versus the estimated number beforehand. So actually it can go both ways. You can have projects, most projects we're seeing are actually creating more impact and doing more with the money than they thought they would. And for me, that just that just shows you the, the power of grassroots communities. Um, and it also shows you the opportunity here. Um, so yeah. so very proud of that stat. That's amazing. Um, a lot of people that work in companies, they, you know, they might sit on their charity committee um they want to do good they work in csr or hr or um, any part of the business but how do you get your if you want to do more how do you get your board engaged yeah okay good question and and i think um this is one of the bits of the question i probably didn't answer i, I went off on a bit of a tangent last time about the, the reporting right yeah so um this is all about evidencing impact, really. So yes, we're a, we're a dating site for companies to meet communities, but that's that's the way we bring them together. The outcomes is what's really interesting. Um, so at the moment, we're collecting some fascinating data. Well, uh, the companies actually they they, they get this, um, and we are we are now taking that and we're going to pr produce a really lovely reporting interface. So by using Action Funder, you get from start to finish, you set up your fund, you meet the projects, you create a portfolio of projects you supported, you get all the social media updates, but also you get all the impact. And where we're heading with this is that, I, 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 I'm calling them the S reports because <laughs> of SG, and obviously with the S pillar. And within the next few weeks, you will be able to press a button and you will have your S report ready. 
um, and it'll all be done through the system. So all these people who are having to write their community engagement reports, their ESG reports, everything else, it takes, takes weeks, months. On Action Funder, you could do it at the moment, but our interface needs to be optimized. In a few weeks' time, you'll press a button and you'll have your entire portfolio of community given displayed in the most beautiful way. And you just put that into your ESG report. That's so, brilliant. And again, going to save so much time for companies. Totally, because what they should be doing is they shouldn't be report writing. They should be you know, looking how they can engage further with communities. And so coming back to your question, um, how do companies get board members engaged? Um, it's really, really interesting. It's actually the board members that are most interested in what we're doing. Um, if yeah. honest, they're the ones that are thinking about this a lot. They're the ones that are championing ESG. They see the, the overall view of how this is affecting and can improve their businesses. Um, so uh, we actually have sometimes a bit of pushback um, from middle management, if I'm honest. And I think sometimes people are a bit scared of what we've created because it's so direct, simple, straightforward. And so there's there's kind of no hiding and it's it's so much quicker. We're, we're 75% quicker and cheaper as a platform than if you do this manually yourself. Yeah. And, and we benchmarked off ourselves and other charities and so on. So um, we do have some pushback where you say to people are saying, oh, we need to do this, that, and so on. Okay. Is action funded, and they're like, oh, well, hold on a minute, and then they have to find excuses because it's a bit too much too early. So, um, but really, we're, we're, we're really blessed with our, our the companies using our system. And I think if there is somebody out there listening to this, um, I want to go and speak to their board. I think the two key things to make is case one is that if their community engagement strategy is not working or hasn't started yet. Action Funder is a super direct, effective platform, low cost platform um, that will enable them to take this journey quickly and uh, and be able to show the benefits of that. And I think the really key thing, as I say, is the data and the reports that we're creating, so that companies can evidence what they're doing, and then they can they should they can use that in point of sale. They can use it in their investor reports. They can use it in their ESG reports and so on. And that's a good thing, you know, it adds value to the business. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, so we're quick, easy and efficient. We have great reporting that can help yeah. them. Uh, we've discussed through, throughout this conversation, there's just so many benefits to social value um, and obviously to using Action Funder and saving money. Um, what's next for Action Funder? <laughs> well, it's a good question. We, we, we need to get our reporting interface in um and that's going to happen in the next few weeks and and can i just say actually i'm unbelievably lucky to have the most amazing team um you know i think uh, nothing could have been created without uh some of the people who have been behind the scenes working i mean our head of product james dowdle um he's the one who's worked with us and, and the developers but he's really still with the platform um and his team underneath him uh, fantastic we've got our services team so um it, we're constantly evolving as, as you know when you release these sites these platforms you create an mvp a minimum viable product and then what you do is you work with your customers saying okay how how can we improve this bit how can we improve that so um we want to improve our reporting interface we're getting amazing data but it's not easily displayed so we're going to create a better reporting interface we want to improve what we call the funder nonprofit relationship. So at the moment, it's a little bit static. You know, you can like stuff, you can share stuff and so on. But we want to get that those relationships really buzzing. Um, we want to open up the front of our site a little bit more. We, we people are saying, oh, I'm not quite sure you know, where, uh, what, what this site does until they speak to us. So we need to set out our shop window a bit better, if I'm honest. We want to, uh, we want to implement a volunteering uh, button so that you can yeah. see choosing which projects to fund you can see which which project would um, uh, accept volunteers and then the big thing that we need to do is uh, we haven't yet integrated our payment pathway 
Um, so at the moment we're manually processing all the payments. That's fine because we, we can double check all the projects and so on. Mm. It enables us to have a really nice touch point with our, with our clients. But in the next six to, six to 12 months, we will integrate one of the big payment pathways like Stripe. And that will then enable companies to literally go on the system, upload their money and distribute to the fund, uh, to the projects as they want. Um, last thing I want to say is that um, for me, one of the questions we get asked a lot is around due diligence. You know, how do I know I'm that that's, that project is real and it's not a charade and so on? We've got lots of checks and balances in place. Um, but what I do want to get into, what I do want to do next as well, is in, in kind of integrate a rating system so that if you're a company or a funder and you get matched with a project, you can see that the nonprofit behind that project has been funded before, they have a five star rating, they've got feedback and support from those previous funders. Because you know that that will create this really lovely exchange. Obviously, we need to look after new nonprofits, new projects, and make sure that they are equally seen and heard. But if we are going to start to put bigger funds through the system as well, which is our plan. So at the moment, the average grant size per project is around two and a half, three thousand pounds. Our ambition is to start to have projects on there for 10,000 pounds, 50,000 pounds, 100,000 pounds. Um, then we will look to um, obviously create a different levels of um, requirements if it's larger money. Um, yeah. So that's that's what we do. But our, our main focus really is bringing more funders onto the system now, now that we've got it all set up. Yeah, well, it's a great system. I've seen it. Um, I back you. Your team are amazing. I've had many dealings with uh, with lots of them. And, you know, I think companies like Action Funder are supporting the issues that we're facing today. And uh, I, I applaud you and your work and what you're doing and looking forward to working with you further and speaking to you further. And thank you for your time and explanation. And I think a lot of people are going to benefit from this conversation. Thank you, Sam. And look, it's, it's a pleasure to be here. And I think just one plug, if that's all right. Um, what we are doing is we're creating a cost of living fund so that companies can all donate into that. Uh, we will we will charge a pl our normal platform fee of 5%, but we'll run it free of charge. Um, so if companies are interested in our cost of living fund um, and donating into that, it'll be a multi, uh, it'll be a pooled fund. So lots of companies putting in bits of money, then we would be really delighted for people to consider that. We'll be going out with comms in that next week. Um, but That's we think brilliant. That's and as soon as you do, um, let me know and I'll share it far and wide. I, I, I'm really, really pleased to hear that. And uh, it's it's giving back yourself. So so thanks for doing that. But brilliant. thanks for your time. Thanks, Sam. And thanks, everyone, right. for listening. Really appreciate it. Have a good it. day. Bye. Bye.